This is Diana and welcome to Crafted Sweetly. In this video I will show you how to use one shape in Cricut Design Space and create six different flowers. So I'm using a star shape and I will show you how to make all these various flowers with this shape only. The size that I have the flower cut is um, it fits nine on a mat. So you can obviously make this smaller, larger, but it, it's nine. So I'm using the pink diamond Alta New ink and then the citrus burst yellow and a blending brush. You can start off with white cardstock and blend the colors in. You can obviously do colored cardstock from the beginning, but I think adding ink to it and different shades of the ink just adds to more interest when looking at the flower. So I'm using, working on a glass mat and I start off with the color off the paper instead of directly on so that it, you get more even blending. And if you use a glass mat you can wipe up with the blending brush any of the ink so none of it really goes to waste. The back side I'm adding a little bit of interest, a little bit of color to it um, so you can see um, just some color because as we shape the flowers you'll be able to see the back side. In addition to the yellow I'm using uh, some of the pink on the edges just to add a little more interest to the color, to the flower. You can do all the fronts in yellow and then continue doing the same on the back and again you can tap your brush on the back side on the glass mat and then do it on the back side just to add a little bit of tint to it. And as you can see there's not much left on the brush. Once you have both sides colored then we need to do the pinks. And again, we're doing the pink just on the front side. Once you have everything colored, um, we need to shape the petals. So I'm using a bone folder actually to shape the petal. And this is part of a set. It has a sharp edge on one side and it helps with shaping the leaf. You can use your fingernail, but I prefer to use this tool to shape the petal. So if you hold the petal upside down and then you can use this tool almost like you use scissors when you're trying to curl a ribbon. You're applying pressure to each petal and pulling on the bone folder and that will curl the cardstock inwards. This is 65 pound cardstock, so you can apply some pressure to it um, and it won't tear. You can use a foam square and a balling tool to give it a little more of a cup shape. But I find that working in the palm of your hand helps with the cupping effect to it. So instead of a soft foam board you can use the palm of your hand and just keep rotating the balling tool to form the cup for the flower. Repeat with the rest of the petals by shaping all the petals and then putting them in the palm of your hand to form the cup. Once you have all your petals done, we're going to stack them. You, want, don't, you don't want to overlap them completely. You want to stagger the petals because that will give you more fullness to the flower. So I'm using Art Glitter Glue to glue these together.
After you have done a few of the layers, I cut a slit into the, the shape because I want to close it up a little bit. I don't want it as open. So I cut it and then I overlap it one or two of the petals so that the shape itself becomes smaller. Continue doing that with each of the layers and as you progress you're going to overlap a little more each time so that the flower becomes more and more closed. As it gets smaller, you can even cut out one or two of the sections so that you can overlap easier. When you get to the last one, you want to completely close this up. So you're going to almost form it into a ball and press it so that it keeps its shape closed and then we will attach this ball basically to the center of the flower. You can kind of see the hole in the middle, so you can take one of the discarded petals and form it into a little roll and then just attach this to cover up the hole in the middle of the flower. This will give you a more finished look to the flower. For this next flower, I'm again same shape, I'm using Ranger's Distress Ink and this is the new speckled egg color that just came out. So we're using the same process with this, um, using the blending brush just to get some of this color to the edge of the flowers and this is just such a pretty um, shade of egg, kind of robin egg color. And it's just the tips that I want to get colored here. Repeat with the color on the back side so that in case the back of the petal shows up, it has a little bit of tint to it. Once you have both sides done with this flower, what we'll do is we're going to score each of the petals. So I'm using the same tool as before, but just drawing a score line right down the middle of the petal. And then using that score line, I'm going to bend each of the petals into a little V shape. So just give it you the crease will, the score line will help make sure that it creases right down the middle. Once you've creased it, then we again need to form this into a ball. So I'm using a balling tool in the palm of my hand to kind of shape it and give it a little more depth. So it almost looks like a little bowl, as you can see. For this flower, I will take three of the shapes and stack them. And again, I will stagger them so they are not exactly on top of each other and you can see all the layers of the petals. Form the stamens, I'm taking a strip of yellow cardstock. It's the same 65 pound cardstock. And the length of it really depends on how many stamens you want to put on there. Um, you just want it to be thin, about um, half a quarter of an inch is this. And then cut this strip into tiny little um, slits on it. So you're using sharp scissors and just cutting really fine slits into it. They should be really close together, probably like one millimeter. 
Once you've cut it, um, I'm going to use that bone folding tool again just to kind of soften up the paper and give it a bit of a curl. This will help um, as I roll up the, the strip. This is almost like quilling, um, except in quilling it's generally much thinner paper. This is cardstock, so I use that boning tool to soften up the paper. So we'll roll this up and then attach it to the center of the flower. You can use a little bit of art glitter glue to make sure that it sticks together. You can leave the center white, but I decided to add a little bit more color to the center so that it's a little bit darker. So I'm just blending in some color for the center portion as well. So for the center, now that the um, stamens have dried, what I'm doing is separating out the individual little slits that I have done in the paper um, so that they spread out a little more. And you can be pretty, uh, not rough, but you know, you can pull on them. It's not going to um, break because the cardstock is pretty, pretty forgiving. So just spread them out so that it looks like the center of a flower. And now using some art glitter glue, I'm going to glue this right in the center. And there you have flower number two. For flower number three, it's the same exact process as the first flower that you did. But instead of gluing the individual layers on top of each other, I used foam spacers. So you can use a little tiny squares of foam and that will give more height in between each tier. So you can use either individual pieces or as you get tall, higher, you can cut down your pieces if they're larger. And that will give you a taller, fuller effect on the flower versus the, the first one. So you can see that it is much taller because of the spacers. For this next flower, um, it's going to be the same one as um, as far as the scored petals and then folding them into a little V. But I'm using only three petals and then I'm cutting each one at a point and then rolling each layer tight. So the first one is obviously going to be the tightest. So just roll it onto itself as tight as you can. Repeat the process with the other two layers, but this time you're not going to make them as tight. So with each layer, you're going to make it less tight. When you assemble this flower, you want to, if there's a gap there, you want to put it where, not the same place where you have the gaps, you want to rotate it so that overlapped layers are on opposite sides. So just add some glue in the center and then we're going to glue the three separate. So this side is a little light. I'm going to take the part that has more petals here and then just set it in so that all of a sudden by putting the two together you have a multiple layers of petals on each side. And for this I'm using an old medicine bottle to hold the flower until it dries. 
The center for this flower is going to be similar, but not quite as many stamens. And then I also want it to be taller, so I'm cutting a wider strip of paper that I will cut the slits into. So same narrow slits, but probably only about an inch because I don't want maybe a dozen stamens that I want to put in the center of this one. And we'll roll it tight the same way and then attach it in the middle. For this flower, I'm using the same petals as before, but now instead of being gentle as you um, set the bowl, you can be a little rougher, and if it creases, that's fine. We'll eventually kind of bunch everything up. So you can press a little harder to make sure that the flower cups more. So we're not doing any cuts in it. Um, I just want to crease as much of it. Um, we're almost making almost like a carnation where everything is kind of ruffled and bunched together. So you can see that it's not a nice and you can just kind of fold it and see how it managed to um, crease. I'll just fold it together and you can use some glue to keep it in that shape. And you repeat the same process with the other two petals. Once you have the three layers kind of bunched together, I'm going to glue them together um, the best way that it fits. So wherever you see a groove, you can kind of tuck them into each other to make sure that they stay together better. And you can add some more glue if necessary. And you can use a pill bottle again to kind of keep everything in place. Um, use the bone folder to kind of arrange petals, whatever, to kind of spread them out. Um, I will be doing a video showing how to put this into an arrangement, so stay tuned for that. For this last one, I wanted to show you a flower that I'm starting with colored paper. And I'm using a brilliant um, sort of a pearl ink that I'm adding onto the colored paper just to give it a little sheen. And this is a Moonlight White from Bill Brilliance. So I'm using this, doing the same thing, using a blending uh, brush to get that sheen onto the colored paper. So as you can see, you can certainly start off with colored paper versus a white. For this flower, um, do the same thing with the bone folder, curling every single petal. So the first layer will have just curled petals. The next layer, I sliced every petal in half and that will give it more of a frilly look to the flower. So I've cut the flower, that layer, um, and then I'm going to make this a little tighter. So same as some of the process in the other flowers, I'm overlapping slightly um, just to make it more of a cup. 
so the first layer was just the regular flower with curled petals this one each petal was cut and then sliced open the layer so that you can make it a little tighter and you want to make this bottom area you can press it against your work area make it a little flatter so that you can glue this to the first petal easier The last layer, we did the same thing. Again, I cut out all the petals and then um, curled it first and cut the layer open so that I can make it super tight. So this is almost going to be almost a ball. So you need to glue the second layer, which is a cup almost, like a little bowl. And then we're going to glue the next one in, but this one is a complete ball and closed up. So just make sure that the center stays closed. So this is your sixth flower. Using the same star-shaped flower from Cricut Design Space. It's just a matter of using different colored paper, blending inks differently, um, and also depending on how you shape the petals and how else you manipulate them in terms of folding. I hope you enjoyed this video on all the different ways you can make flowers using just one shape. As I mentioned, I will be making a video on how to put this together so that you can make a flower arrangement if you choose to. If you have any questions, please comment below. Please subscribe and share for more fun projects. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.